What's going on my super fam? Today we have an updated build on Yai Miko. She's, she's gonna be back in a couple of days time as of release of this video. But more than that, the reason why we have this updated build is because that there has been so many changes, especially towards Electro character after the release of Dendro. And Yai Miko was one of the characters that got the most buff out of the old release Electro characters. And so with that guys, let's dive into today's build. Okay, so first off, assuming that you've already understood the whole special kit of Yai Miko and how she basically works, I won't be diving or talking anything in depth into her skills and burst talent anymore. If you still want to have an in-depth look into them, I suggest you look into this video of mine after this because I went through pretty in-depth in my last video. Now, one of the main reasons why Yai Miko's got the most buff of all the old Electro character is first of all, obviously, because she has now access to aggravate reactions which have helped her to increase her damage ceiling by a lot but not only that Ya is also one of the few electro character that have access to EM scaling in that she is able to make use of her EM stats to give direct buff to her skills and so since dendro reactions or dendro resonance specifically take use of EM Yai Miko also has a lot of benefit from that buff and so with that specific reason Reasons, many of the players within the community have backed the question of whether if the new good dream set is her best artifacts option right now and that's exactly what we're gonna do right now we're gonna be testing out our new good dream set on Yai Miko along with two of her best build option before which are her main DPS set and then her burst gameplay options now normally many of us don't use burst option Yai Miko but I know that some of us do want to use her that way which is why i'm still going to be testing out and including that in this video here how we're going to be doing it is that i'll have yai miko slot in a hyper bloom team with two dendro characters so that we have dendro resonance specifically here we're going to be have nahida on yai miko's team plus i'm going to have yai miko running as an on-field character so that she basically has the most buff from nahida i've tried my best to have all of the three artifact sets on basically the same level and for First off, here's going to be Yai Miko's on Guild Dream set. For this build, I'm basically running her on full EM. Across all three Yai Miko's build, I'm going to be sticking with the Kagura Verity. Here's her Guild Dream set, and for each of these stats, I'm having Sans on EM. Her cup is also going to be on EM, and her circlet is going to be either a crit rate or a crit damage, so that she has good crit ratio. Here's going to be the team performance when Yai is running on go to dream set Next up, this is going to be Yai DPS build. Here's going to be her build ratio. As for the sets, I'm running two piece Thundering Fury and two piece Gladiator because basically that is the best set that she's got before, especially when you're running a DPS set because she generally didn't have a good four piece set in general. The Sans, I'm running attack percentage. Cup is always going to be electro percentage and then Circlet is on crit rate. Here's Yai's team performance on her no more DPS set. Thank <laughs> you. 
And then finally, we have Yai Miko's burst set. The goal is to have her focus more on energy recharge. We're going to be running Yai Miko with 4 piece emblem here because that's how burst Yai Miko usually runs. For the sands, we're going to be running energy recharge. The cup is going to be electro and finally, circlet is going to be crit rate. Here's how burst build Yai Miko team is going to run. Finally, we have a quick demonstration of Yamiko teams in solo situations. And so overall, here's the results guys. We can see that when running in team situation, especially when we've seen it in the Abyss, Gilded Dream and DPS Yai Miko perform basically on the same level, while Burst Yai Miko usually always do worse than the other options of her artifacts, simply because if we're focusing on all of her bursts, we're missing out on the basis of Yai Miko's kit, which is her skill damage. Since Yai Miko's burst is very long of up to 22 seconds, if you're focusing on everything from your burst, it won't be able to make up all the damage loss from the 20 second cooldown from the lost damage of her E skills. For the quick solo demonstration, usually if you're able to take out your enemies pretty fast within under 1 to 2 rotation, 3 of the builds won't be able to make too much of a difference. So overall guys, in terms of best artifacts recommendations, both Gilded Dream sets and her normal DPS build still gonna be be her two best options because the two builds still has its pros and cons. Since with Gilded Dreams, if you're focusing on EM, you're only going to be able to make the most out of the sets when you're doing aggravates damage on Yai Miko. And with no more DPS build, you're missing out on higher aggravate damage. However, guys, here's going to be my personal recommendation in terms of best RFX build is that I would say that the Gilded Dream is going to be a better option for you to go because the four piece sets is it's just so good, it provides Yai Miko a lot of buff, but we're just going to be making a slight adjustment to her artifact stats in that we're going to be now running Electro Cup instead of EM, so that we're not basically putting all of the egg into one basket, which is EM, but now we're spreading out a little bit onto more of Electro damage for Yai Miko, so that even when she's not doing reaction damage, she still has a pretty good raw Electro damage. Next up is going to be Yai's best weapon option, I would say that generally it is still the same from before, which is that first of all the Kagura is definitely going to be her most badass option because it looks really good and it's just basically is for Yai Miko. Now if you're having Yai Miko as an on-field character then definitely the Lost Prayer is going to be her next option because it also gives Yai a lot of buff. However guys this only work if Yai is an on-field character, otherwise she's missing out on a lot of damage power. Passive. Other than that, the Skyward Atlas is a pretty solid option all around because even though it only gives attack percentage and Yai also scales with attack percentage as well, but this can help Yai with both on-field and off-field damage output. So that is still her all-around best 5-star option if you don't have her BIS. Moving on to the 4-star, the Wizards R5 is definitely going to be the best even out damage the Kagura Verity at times if she has the correct buff and if the buff is still on. However, the weapon always 
always fall behind whenever it's on downtime but overall it is going to be the best four star option that you have other than that you also have the solo pearl but this weapon also is recommended that she's going to be an on-field character yaimiko's overall free to play option is going to be the oath sworn eye now i don't know if you have this on your account because it was only given out during the event but if you do have it it's a pretty solid free to play option other than that some of the em weapon option works pretty well with yai as well if you for example have the wandering even star from the weapon banner it's a new solid option that you can put for yai miko if you don't have any other character of yours on the team have it and then next up guys we have one of the most important parts of yai's build today which is going to be her team build now first off in regarding with team build i've seen so many questions from players asking whether or not they should have yai miko as an on-field or off-field character in that i would say mainly yai miko is a character that you want to have her as an off-field because most of the time she's dealing passive damage for your team and then after that you can just have your other main carry deal the most damage on field however of course if you want to see the most damage possible out of yai miko you will want to have her as an on-field character because most of the time now we're going to be running yai in a dendro reaction team and when we're talking about dendro reaction team obviously nahida is going to be present therefore any on-field character will be able to get the most buff from nahida up to 250 em from her passive talent not only that if you're deciding to go basically a full em path build yai miko like a gilded dream set you want to have her on field so that she has the chance to trigger the most reaction to get the most benefit out of yai's em build but personally guys i find that both options perform perfectly well with each other so you can just freely choose between whichever you prefer playing the most and so when talking about dendro reaction team especially with electro character obviously we're only going to be looking into hyper bloom and quicken team for these two are going to be the best team that we have since any electro charge or overload team is basically outdated right now talking about hyper bloom team we first off have the option of double dendro as you have seen from all of the tests we've done above this team is pretty good for yai since she's able to make use of dendro resonance or you can have two electro character on our hyper bloom team you can also have double hydro on hyper bloom team but usually i don't really recommend it because unless your main carry on field is someone who scales with hp it's just basically a wasted stat especially when you're running with yai miko and then finally the set that i would say that's going to be the best out of all is going to be having kazuha on your hyper bloom team since kazuha just basically push your yai miko damage ceiling to the next level plus he has very good crowd control therefore makes things usually a lot easier for you next off we have our full quicken team where we run double electro and double dendro now since we don't have any good dendro healer yet we will have to have kuki shinobu on this specific team therefore you would definitely want to invest quite a lot into your kuki shinobu's damage for her to help you with off field damage here on this team and once again guys a very good option you have also is to have kazuha on this team and i find that kazuha is actually perfect option here you only need one dendro character to apply dendro and then the rest will be taken care of with kazuha now to demonstrate how good this team actually perform here's going to be a quick demonstration of the team with yai miko running on gilded dream set And so you can see that compared to her normal Hyper Bloom team performance we've had before, it's at least a 6 second faster, which is really really good. The biggest difference here is because we have Kazuya here to buff the team's electro damage, plus along with very good crowd control. So overall, just like any electro character that we've had before Dendro Reaction arrived, Yaimiko is now a lot better to play with, especially when you have her in the right team, she's 
gonna be able to deal you very good damage plus with the fact that her totem is able to deal with enemy anywhere across the field she's gonna be giving you a much easier time to deal with especially when it comes to group situation so those are everything i have to say regarding updated build of our yai miko i hope that it has been very informative for you and help you find out the best build option for your yai if you have any question guys do leave it down in the comment section and i will get to you there if you've enjoyed this video and would love to see more builds and team builds i have a whole playlist of that so be sure to check it out as i'm sure it will be very valuable to you with that guys i wish you a super day and i will catch you on my next video